Hey, welcome to our second video. Uh, once again, I have with me Brevin Becker. Hi. And uh, we're going to start right from the top uh, with a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, uh, in last week's video, I said that Cherry Pie did a special event to commemorate our 500th show. And I realized that was not technically correct. We did a big deal for our 10 year anniversary show, which was that same year. We did this uh, special VIP package thing with a uh, meet and greet and a special acoustic set for people who were participating in that and special commemorative t-shirts. But that was 10 year anniversary, not the 500 show. So technical correction there. Um, so we were re are recording this on April 5th. Yesterday was election day. Um, as we discussed last time, Brevin was running for village board. And how did that go? Uh, I ended up not winning, but uh, I was, at the start of the campaign, I wasn't really expecting much out of it. I was thinking maybe election day I get 50 votes at best, and it turns out I got almost 300, so that's pretty cool to know that there's a lot of people out there who I've never even met that put a vote in for me, so I'm happy with that, and I'll be uh, working with uh, other village board members in the future. So you do plan to remain active and go to meetings and maybe even be on a uh, committee if you can kind of thing? Yes. So. Um, perhaps running again in the future with a little more experience under your belt and maybe go in with higher expectations. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But that reminds me an uh, uh, issue of um, that I've felt for a long time in involving politics where I wish politics wasn't treated as if it were a sport. Because I was sports, as Herm Edwards once famously said, you play to win the game. That's the way it's set up. The rules are set up. You have a competition, and at the end you have a winner and you have a loser, and then you celebrate or you say, hey, there's always next year or whatever. And that's the it. That's the whole point is you play to win the game. And in politics, that's not the way it works. Or it's not the way it should work at all. Winning is not the end. It's the beginning. So like when, um, when Obama won, I was glad he won. I voted for him. But I didn't go out and celebrate. Hey, we won. We won. No. The job is just beginning. Now you have to govern. You have to follow through. Um, this recent uh, health care legislation uh, that the Republicans were supporting, and it didn't pass. And it was like characterized as a, the Democrats win, and the Republicans lose, and Trump loses. And, and it was treated like sports. And completely lost is like, no, it's about health care and about people's finances and their health. And uh, I, I just, I hate to see it treated as a, as a sport. This is uh, picking up from last week uh, where you did the Ask Me Anything. So uh, let's uh, resume. Go ahead with the next question. All right. Mary asks, have you ever thought about writing jingles for commercials or uh, cities looking for a catchy phrase? I have thought about it, I suppose. I have at least one friend who's done some jingles, and uh, he's good at it, and I think I would be okay at it, but um, I just have not seen the opportunities. I haven't look, gone looking for it, and people have not come to me for that. So I guess I haven't thought about it a whole lot, but um, sometimes just because you can do something doesn't mean other people want you to do it, so it's a matter of opportunities. I don't know, if you, if you know anybody who wants a jingle, I'd be uh, interested in hearing from them. Jennifer asks, what's the best show you've played? What's your favorite song to play? Do you ever get nervous before a gig anymore? All right, three questions. Three questions in one. I have played uh, thousands of shows, and there have been some really good ones over the years. Um, but instead of trying to parse through all that, I'm just trying to think recent history. Um, the show that Cherry Pie played at uh, the... Harley Davidson Economa Walk this past September was pretty good. You were there running the video wall. Yep, that was a pretty that good show. That uh, was one where the video wall kind of broke. Um, it did? But yeah, for it wasn't fully functional the entire time, but it was still an awesome show. Uh, I'm facing the audience if I, I'm not aware of when it, the it's video still wall. Good. Oh, okay. it's still good. A broken video wall is better than no video wall. Yeah, but uh, it was a huge crowd. It was great weather. It was a great stage, great stage to move around on. Lots of friends there, lots of people getting crazy in the audience. That's always fun to watch. Um, and I had just bought a guitar that day, my uh, blue Paul Reed Smith. I just picked it up that afternoon and was playing it, and it felt really good. So that, just in recent history, that show stands out. Of course, we've had a lot of great um, uh, 
state fair shows, some good summer fest shows, that, you know, the types where you just have the, the biggest crowds you can imagine, and that, that goes a long way. But that's not the only thing that makes for a great show. But, uh, but yeah, it's, I've had some great experiences and, and looking forward to uh, the future ones. All right, second part of that question. Favorite song to play? Now, last video I answered, uh, you know, a qu the question kind of a non-Cherry Pie context. I was listing some of the favorite songs that I like to play at open jams and solo shows and stuff. But so now I'll, I'll answer more from a Cherry Pie perspective. What are my favorite songs to play with Cherry Pie? And those tend to be um, the songs that have the more interesting keyboard parts that might have, um, you know, maybe some piano through it, but also add a, an organ or a synth and kind of do different uh, roles with the keyboards. Um, in general, any of the Sticks songs that we've played kind of fit that role. I love playing Come Sail Away, Renegade is Fun, Lady, uh, songs like that. Uh, along those lines, I love playing Carry On Wayward Son by Kansas, uh, for a play a long time. Um, Guitar-wise, I love playing um, More Than a Feeling by Boston. I love how uh, my acoustic and Dave's electric kind of blend together and the dynamics of that song and uh, the emotional impact it has. So um, those are the ones off the top of my head that I think uh, are my favorite to play. And the, what last one, what, getting nervous? Yeah, getting nervous before a gig. Yeah, so. not really. Um, I remember the first show I ever played in front of a big crowd, the first um, rock band show. I was at a band called Toys back in 1989, and we were playing a ski show in downtown Madison. And before the show, I looked out and realized there's a lot of people here. I've never done this before. There was over, you know, over a thousand. And so I was a little nervous, but I was excited about the challenge. And we started the show, and um, a couple songs in, I was like, this is great. I mean, this is not a problem. <laughs> I thrive on this. I'm, and ever since then, it's uh, it, that's not been a problem. Now, not to say that I never get nervous, but if I get nervous, it, it's not about the crowd. It's about my sense of preparation. If we're doing songs that I'm unsure about or if I don't feel quite prepared for one reason or another, that can make me nervous. Did you go to the bathroom before the show? In 1989? Well, is that one of the things you worry about? Only, well, only if I'm sick. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever had an issue with that? I uh, no. Okay. Um, Almost threw up once on uh, stage. When was that? That was the uh, Josh Becker show at a, I, it was some uh, kind of cabin-esque type bar. Cabin-esque bar. And then bar. I drove Courtney home later that night. <laughs> um... I, can't, I don't know which show that was referring but why did you almost throw up? Uh, I think it was some bad Rocky's Pizza or something. No. <laughs> There's a sponsorship we're never going to get. But um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not aware. But you almost threw up, but you didn't. Did you? I, I threw up after the show, but I almost oh. did it in one of the last songs. Did Did you know where you would throw up? Like, did you, I mean, I assume there wasn't a bucket handy, but if you were to throw up, would it have been on your snare drum or up to the side? or? Um. I don't know, you can kind of cool hitting the drum and it splashes up. Oh, good visual effect, yeah. That makes the lights look good. But a good experience for maybe next time you go into a show not feeling your best, maybe to be prepared with some uh, some buckets or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's always a learning experience. Um, okay, what's the next question? All right, uh, Paul asks, do you want to sell your house, please? Question mark. All right, that's, that's Paula Becker, no relation. Uh, she's a real estate agent, so she's she would love to get her her paws on our house. But uh, no, we're not selling. It's a nice house. Um, the only reason we'd ever want to sell is if we became insanely wealthy and could upgrade uh, big time. But short of that, uh, this is the house we want to live in pretty much forever, I think. Um, so sorry, Paula, but uh, appreciate the interest. Uh, Doreen says, before you dedicated your life to music, what was your occupation? All right. Well, this was addressed in the last video. Uh, and, and but to summarize again, um, I do have a degree in commercial art. And I've done illustration and design. But more kind of to the uh, underpinnings of the, of the question, there really wasn't a point before I dedicated myself to music. It was always there. It was only a matter of if it was something that I could do full time or not. Christine asks, when you respond to these questions, you should do it on a song. That would be cool. So I should be answering these questions with a melody. 
Yes, I used to be an artist, and now I'm a full-time musician. Be careful what you wish for. Uh, Dave asks, what's up with Josh Becker Electric? All right, well, that is um, what I used to call my three-piece band, Josh Becker Electric. And I called it that because I was doing a lot of solo acoustic shows, and I wanted it to kind of very specifically differentiate from between the solo shows and the, and the band shows. And it started off with uh, me just playing electric guitar and having... Uh, bass player Courtney Hollis, and um, I've gone through a series of drummers. The seventh drummer is the one that lasted the longest, and he's sitting right next to me. <laughs> Seven drummers, that sounds a lot like Spinal Tap. So, you know, hopefully you will not be... I almost was the one that choked on their vomit. Well, I guess he... Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, he choked on someone else's vomit. Someone else's vomit, vomit right. Yeah. So, that's... So as long as it's your own vomit, I think you're okay. And But, you know, we worry about spontaneous combustion, so yeah. we'll... But anyway... Um, and then later, uh, I started adding acoustic guitar to the show. I added piano to the show and just changed the name to the Josh Becker Band, which is what it's been for a while. Um, we stopped. The last gig we had was last August, so it's been, you know, like nine or ten months. And really, it was just a combination of things where I was starting to do a lot more dueling pianos. Brevin was getting his opportunity with uh, Casket Robbery. We talked about that last time. And I just stopped booking it, and, and Courtney's got her stuff going on. Um, we're not against doing it again, but we just have not been marketing it. So that's that's really what's been going on with that. Cheryl asks, do you sing Ah Leah lately in the Cherry Pie shows? I love that song and my middle name is Leah. Ha. <laughs> okay, Ah Leah is a fun song that I've done in several bands, going all the way back to Jukebox Heroes. Um, I wasn't singing that one then, but uh, I was playing on it. And then later I sang it with LP the band and then with Cherry Pie. Um, we did it for a long time, and um, when we started doing it, we actually used a vocal sample to get that big uh, harmony during the choruses, and we only did that for a couple songs, and there came a point where we decided not to do that, just out of principle. Um, but we did do it a couple times after that, um, and it, it worked. We, had, we got enough vocal uh, harmony on it. I'm not really sure why we haven't brought it back for real, because... Some people do seem to like that one. I mean, of all the songs that I sing with Cherry Pie, which is not very many, that one is the one that people seem to to bring up the most as being a fun one. So maybe we should consider it. What do you think? You like that song? Yeah. yeah. Heard it a million times. <laughs> and a million and one is not too many. So, okay. All right. all right. The next question has several parts, so let's tackle it one by one. Go ahead. All right. Cinders asks... Do you have any children, and do you plan on having any more at this point in your life? I do have two kids, and half of them are sitting right here. Um, ben is 21, Brevin's 19. Those are my kids. I have a stepson, Jake, who is 17. I do not plan to have any more. In fact, that would be physically impossible at this point. I've been uh, serving unleaded for a while now. The, the, the next step would be grandchildren, so who knows when that will happen. Uh, Cinders also asks, uh, after playing all those years with Cherry Pie, how do all you guys get along? And has the uh, band ever come close to breaking up? Um, we get along pretty well. Um, it's, you know, like any relationship, there'll be some conflicts, but uh, never close to breaking up. And um, the success helps. You know, like a sports team, if there's internal conflict on a sports team, they always say the best remedy is winning. When you're winning, the arguments don't seem very important at all. And um, Cherry Pie's been doing very well for a long time, and that makes it easy to get along sometimes. But overall, I mean, we function really well together. Uh, we we have we relate to each other uh, as friends in, in, in different ways. And, um, yeah, I, I think if any band I've been in, we, we get along uh Perhaps the best or, or right up there. It's uh, it's not not really an issue. Uh, Cinders also wants to know: Have any band members ever fallen or gotten injured during a performance? Well, the one time that stands out is uh, when back when we used pyro, and John got burned pretty bad on the arm when a pyro went off when it wasn't supposed to. Um, all of us actually got singed a little bit at one time or another by pyro, but he was the one who had the more serious injury that needed uh, treatment. Uh, aside from that, uh, I remember when I was with Toys a long time ago, I fell at uh, Taste of Madison and uh, 
badly bruised my wrist. And another time I stepped up on a table and s stuck my head into a ceiling fan. That was a long time ago. Uh, those are the uh, my instance, but those were not with cherry pie. And I can't think of anybody else getting hurt. Steven asks, what's your least favorite song to perform with Cherry Pie? And is Tammy your first wife? All right, two very different questions. Least favorite song to play with Cherry Pie. Now, that doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad song. It just means I don't enjoy playing it. And there's a couple that come to mind. Um, Once Bitten, Twice Shy. Um, we used to do uh, Little Susie by Tesla. And these songs were just very tedious. The part I had to play was just so repetitive and so... Tedious is, is the only word, um, so that made it not so fun for me. But like I said, doesn't necessarily make it a bad song. Uh, is Tammy my first wife? No, she is not. I like to say I believe in marriage. I like marriage so much that I did it twice. But I was married to Trish, uh, who is Ben and Brevin's mother. And uh, we were married from 1990 until 2008. And uh, we still get along. I'm, we're shooting this in her house right now. So she's not home at the moment, but it wouldn't matter if she was. As long as she's not making a lot of noise. But um, So Tammy's my, my second wife. And, um, you know, second marriages tend to, tend to be pretty good because you learn a lot. You uh, kind of figure out what's important, what's not important. And um, you can kind of, you know, perhaps more customize what you want your relationship to be compared to when you're young and really don't know anything. <laughs> but uh, but no, the first first marriage was good, and uh, we obviously came out with some good kids, and um, I always felt like at, at age 23, I got married on my 23rd birthday. It, it was the right thing to do. It was not a mistake, all right? Just because it didn't last forever does not mean it was a mistake. So, all right. Barb asks, if your life became a movie, what actor would play you? That's a fun question. Um, quite a while ago, I made jokes about um, basketball players playing me, like Wally Serbiak was one, <laughs> or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I did a, a little cartoon where had him with long hair. Um, as far as like, I guess the idea is that like the younger actors of today playing a young Josh Becker, who would it be? And I guess I don't keep track of the younger actors, and they're all so good looking. It would be kind of silly to <laughs> to suggest that any of them should play me. I don't know. Maybe you should play me. I don't think I ever had a beard quite that big, but uh, might as well. So I, you know what? I think that's a good question to ask people uh, out there, like my friends. Who do you think should play me? With a, from an outside perspective, I think that might be a fun uh, see what people come up with. Who would play you if you were ever a movie? Ah, uh, I'd go for Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> You know, he's a little bit chubbier, but... A little bit! Not only is he chubby, but you're super skinny. That would be that would be like a, 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 a funhouse mirror version of you. Barb also asks, if you could walk around with a theme song playing in the background, what would yours be? Probably, Why Does It Hurt When I Pee by Frank Zappa. Oh, I don't know, maybe not. Um... I don't know, Laville Strangiato, perhaps, or uh, um, well, you, you have up for you. You have one that you think would be your theme song? Uh, during high school, I had a little Bluetooth speaker. Uh, all my friends did. We each had a theme song that we played as we walked through the hallways, and mine was a song called Laffy Taffy by a rap group, and uh, it, would, uh, it was like, girl, shake that Laffy Taffy, that Laffy Taffy, girl, shake that Laffy Taffy. They call me Mr. Bubblegum. I'm looking for Mr. Jigglestick. I want to die. Uh, oh, because you're so thick. Girls call me Jolly Rancher because that lasts so long. You can suck me for a long time. Oh, my God, girl, this ain't no dance floor. It's a candy store. But, yeah, that was kind of like my theme song. Wow, that that's that's great. I'm not familiar with that song. But it's funny that with you, it wasn't even a theory. Like, what would it be if you had a theme song? You actually did it. You had the speaker and everything. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's funny. All right. Uh, Sammy Ray asks, what is your pre-show mental process? And how does it differ when you have to play an instrument which is secondary and not your main comfort zone? All right, now Sammy is a professional musician herself. I addressed a little bit earlier how um, the only thing that would make me nervous is if I felt unprepared um, at all. And I think she's totally um, 
relating to that, the idea of playing a secondary instrument or something that makes you feel maybe like you're not 100% prepared for this particular show. Uh, as far as a pre-show mental preparation, I admit that for a long time now, there isn't much of one. It's, um, it's, not, that, it's not that it's a job you go to, because I, I, when I was younger, I remember working with some musicians who talked about playing gigs as, go, time to go to work. And I promised myself, if I ever found myself talking that way, that I should stop doing it. <laughs> because it doesn't pay enough to be work. But, um, so it's not like I treat it as a job, but it is sometimes, it's so frequent, so common to go play gigs, that if I had a pre-show mental ritual, I would be overthinking it. I would be like, perhaps driving myself nuts. Um, obviously, there's some shows you get excited about because, you know, they're going to be a good crowd and, and for whatever reason, it's going to be a particularly exciting time. And those, you know, you just get fun. It's like like anticipating Christmas. It's just, uh, it's just fun to anticipate. Um, as far as, you know, the, the back again to playing uh, uh, something that was um, a secondary instrument or something new, you know, you just try to prepare as best you can and enjoy the challenge. So you know, you're broadening your broadening your horizons, getting out of your comfort zone, like she said, and um, that can be a, a, a very fulfilling experience in itself if you approach it with the proper diligence and um, and and grow from it. That's 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 part of the fun. Uh, Lee asks, "Do you enjoy rotating your organ?" Of course, referring to my spinning keyboard stand, which was built uh, by our friend uh, Paul uh, back in 2009, and it's still the coolest thing in the world. Um, I mean, I've obviously gotten somewhat used to it, but I've still, every once in a while, I'll just look at it and go, that's so cool. And actually, when Paul built it, he was um, tweaking, he was trying to figure out the best way to put it together for, for quite a while, and then we finally did it. Um, we kind of thought he would probably build similar ones for other keyboard players, but he hasn't, um, which means that mine is still pretty special. <laughs> so I'm really glad to have it. It's 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 a fun showmanship type of thing as far as do I enjoy rotating my organ and yeah, okay, I'm gonna ignore the innu innuendo there, but uh it's 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 such a cool piece of hardware and I'm so glad to have it. Do you ever uh spin in and almost fall off stage? Or do you um, always know where you're going when you're spinning it? Well, because of the way the cables are at the bottom of it, I always have to kind of know where those are and where I can expect to be able to spin it. Um, the times that I've almost fallen off the stage has way more to do with where the edge of the stage is, and I could do that playing guitar or anything else. Um, you know, sometimes you, your foot finds that end of, edge of the stage and like, whoa, but it, it's not really directly related to doing the keyboard spinning thing. I, I know sometimes you like to just spin the keyboard around, let it spin a couple times while you just stand there. Like I, I've seen you do that a couple times where you like mm. send it spinning and then you catch it again. But it never actually goes around more than like one and a quarter well, revolutions. Yeah. Have you ever like caught it weirdly and like slammed a key and it was awkward? And Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's, that'll happen once in a while. But hope, you know, it's like any other mistake, you just kind of hope they don't notice. <laughs> Uh, Jay asks, what is the meaning of life? It's always interesting to hear people's take on that. Oh, meaning of life. Okay, so this is something that um, we could spend a lot of time on, uh, and maybe we will at some point in the future if, if, if anybody is interested. But uh, I guess to summarize it, I think people need to bring meaning to their life. They need to um, give give their life meaning. Um, and that's not that hard to do if you kind of think about it. I mean, I think uh, my life has been given a lot of meaning by what I do with music. It's certainly been given a lot of meaning with my relationships, my marriages, my friends, and of course my kids. And, you know, things like that um, will inherently, you know, give give your life meaning. And there's, there's tons of other things that can. So part of what I'm saying is that I certainly don't believe in life just having meaning automatically or being bequeathed meaning by some, you know, revelation of higher power or that kind of thing. Um, not to say that any of those things are completely ruled out as possibilities, but I don't think any of those things are knowable right now. So I'd rather, you know, direct my 
energies towards things that I know are real in my life and such as the things I mentioned earlier. Um, so that's that's how I kind of approach it. And you have anything to add to that? Um, I guess I say life is a bunch of experiences. It's not necessarily about living because maybe sometimes you'll regret living, but that's an experience. And yet life is just a bunch of experiences. It's going to be okay. Um, well, yeah, it, it, you know, they say it's a journey, not a destination. Um, life's what happens when you're busy making other plans and it's like life is what you make it. And, um, if you're sitting around waiting for somebody else to give your life meaning, or if you're looking through, you know, scriptures or whatever, looking for that meaning, I, you know, I think you can find things that might, you know, make your life interesting. And, and but I, I don't think that's something that we believe in like counting on. That's, you know, I think there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, you have experiences, you have things that become important to you and um, you act on those and, and you know, everybody's uh, life is their own book and, uh, and you know, you make of it what you can. And like I said, if, we, um, if anybody's interested in discussing this further, we could do that in a future video or, or conversation. Just, just let us know. Linda asks, how did you manage to find such a beautiful wife? Um, pretty simple. I grew my hair and joined a band. ChristianMingle.com <laughs> Alright, and the last question from uh, Sean. How the hell do you manage to remember how to play every song you've ever played in your life? Well, I'm glad it might seem that way. Songs uh, aren't that different. Well, there's only so many notes you have and stuff. I, it is funny that there's sometimes I'll look back at songs that I used to play and I know I used to play them. I know, I know I used to play them, but I haven't the slightest idea how they go now. I don't know what key they're in or anything like that. And this, sometimes that's funny to kind of observe how how something that was forefront of my brain is no longer there. Uh, in particular, some of the classical stuff, like I have videos where I'm playing piano accompanying Brevin on violin or, or Ben on oboe, and I'm playing these classical pieces that I had memorized, and I'm watching these videos going, I. I don't remember playing that. I don't. I would not have the slightest idea how to play that particular piece right now. So, um, so obviously, yeah. But but to the extent that I do know a lot of songs, and and that uh, sometimes it seems like I retain everything. Um, you know, I think Sean, you you know a lot of songs too, and and um, you know, musicians, you just what you, what you love to do and the songs you love to play will stick, and and the re repetition of some of them and. Now, what uh, maybe a further update on you aside from the uh, the election? Uh, you played a gig with a new band this past weekend. You tell us about that. Oh, uh, yeah, I was a uh, fill in drummer for the band Your Mom, and it was wait, me, my mom. What? Oh, that's the name uh, of the band. Yeah. You can check out the band Your Mom at uh, yourmomwasgreatlastnight.com. It's not a joke, that's that's the actual website, and they're uh, well, it is a website and a joke, it can be both, yeah. And uh, we played up in uh, Tomahawk, Wisconsin, a nice little bar, and it was a pretty awesome show. A lot of, we got some people dancing, and it was really mm -hmm. nice. Got to stay in a nice cabin up there. Very mm -hmm. beautiful. Now, your mom includes uh, keyboard player Bill Anderson, who comes to uh, our open jam at the Red Zone in Madison most Tuesdays. Uh, and so he's a real cool guy, really great keyboard player. And, um, and Phil Dickert is also the, the leader of your mom. And it is, it's a, it's a brilliant band name because it's hard to use it in a sentence without giggling, right? But uh, Phil has been to the Open Jam a couple times and he sings and plays guitar. And the uh, bass player Rob. And bass player Rob, who I don't think I've met. But uh, yeah, they asked you to, uh, to do a show and you did one and you're probably going to do at least another one and who knows how many more in the future. Just some recent development since the last video that you uh, hooked up with this, this cover band. All right, so uh, I think that'll bring this uh, video to an end. Um, I think we plan to, to make more of them. We're going to try to keep them a little more compact. Uh, I know the first one was 51 minutes long. Uh, but uh, if people want to watch, uh, we're glad to keep making them. And uh, if you have anybody has any suggestions of things for us to talk about, um, just let us know. And uh, in the meantime, I guess uh, for Brevin and myself, uh, take care. We'll see you out on the road.